Well, guess what? I didn't end up going back to that spot last night. I just stayed here, <laughs> which is okay. Still the Big Sioux River. Still a nice little spot. Look at that, huh? That's pretty neat, the way it drops down like that. And the road wasn't too bad here behind me. Uh, the traffic died down quite a bit last night, so I didn't hear anything. But today, I think uh, we'll just head through Sioux Falls real quick. And then uh, I think I'll go up to Del City, or whatever it's called, to get some cheap gas, relatively speaking. And then uh, end up maybe around um, Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> Let's go. Right, made it to our first stop Sioux Falls South Dakota and instead of showing you the city which is a bunch of streets are under construction with a lot of buildings and stuff I thought I'd show you what Sioux Falls is uh, named after instead and that is well Sioux Falls so this is uh, the uh, Big Sioux River and these falls are just out of the middle of nowhere. Take a look at the uh, geology here. But anyway, uh, back in 1851, the, uh, there were about 35 um, Indian chiefs, tribes, that signed a treaty with the U.S. government uh, seeding over 24 million acres, I believe it was. And that 24 million acres included all the land that they uh, controlled east of, uh, east of the Big Sioux River, and then a little bit of land over here. And uh, that was in exchange for uh, $275,000 in cash. Doesn't sound like a lot now. <laughs> I guess back then that was a lot of money and then some other rights and uh, things of that sort. That was 1851, and then in 1856, uh, some uh, speculators started coming in and uh, doing their thing, and they they uh, founded the little hamlet of Sioux Falls, uh, what do they call it, Sioux Falls City or something like that. Well, then uh, speculators, speculators being what speculators do, some of them were dishonest, and uh, hoodwinked uh, a lot of the Indians into signing over some of their rights and some of their cash. And uh, over time, the Indians uh, started to get resentful, as they should be. And that led to the um, that led to the Dakota conflict in 1862. And after that Dakota conflict, uh, some people were killed here. Everybody pretty much abandoned the place here. And then uh, finally uh, in 1869, uh, Sioux Falls City was once again settled. And then the rest became history, right? But it's a really interesting little place here, the Sioux Falls. It's quite pretty. they got a nice park here. And you know, um, I think I may have said this last year when I came through here. I'm really impressed by South Dakota, you know? Always growing up as a kid and even into my adulthood not really knowing much about it. You just think about South Dakota as being that place out there, you know, that's flat, cold, and snowy maybe. But uh, South Dakota's quite pretty. So uh, I highly recommend, I do highly recommend, come to South Dakota. Uh, the uh, southwest corner, the southeast corner, both been pretty, as well as the areas that I've driven along through the south, 
Now I'm going to kind of drive the middle of the state, so we'll see what that looks like. And in fact, let's uh, kind of do that right now. Going up to uh, Dell City, I think. So um, from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, one more look. And let's move on to the next place. Change of plans. Not going to Del Rapids. I'm going to Winfred, I think. <laughs> Cheaper gas over there, and it's on my way. So let's head out. This is the old homestead for Laura Ingalls Wilder. You remember her? The little house on the prairie fame? That's right. We're just right outside to Spet, uh, South Dakota. And this was the old homestead where she lived uh, from the ages of 13 to 18. Uh, take a look at this here. This is the old house. And imagine living in something like this. Pretty interesting. Um, the uh, program, Little House on the Prairie, as you might recall, was about nine seasons long. And uh, here's an interesting tidbit. When it started in 1974, the pilot episode was based on the third book in the series of books that she wrote. But here's the old house. Look at this. Here's the room that was... Dining room and kitchen, and then the uh, sitting room, I guess what we would call living room today, but uh, lots of chores are done. Here's the old ironing board, and making of the clothes over there, writing desk. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Piano. Or organ, whatever. And then... Um, Guess would be this would be the master bedroom. <laughs> and then the kids were over here. One thing that I found interesting coming in here was how low everything is. I guess you know everyone everyone was a little bit shorter then. But uh, take a look at the stove here. Comes up to my thigh. Well, nowadays, things are about 36 inches high, so they're about right here. So I guess we've grown a bit in the, uh, in the day, huh? So the old uh, little house on the prairie homestead. Nice view. Despet, South Dakota. And it sure is windy. I wonder how windy it is. I wonder if it's like this all the time. Pretty interesting place. I'm gonna make a quick stop here in Huron, South Dakota to show you the world's largest something. I'll show you that. But uh, take a look at this. The weather, she's a changing. A lot of dew on the uh, vehicle this morning on the ground. So, uh, it'll be drop, I think, about 20 degrees between today and tomorrow. And uh, I think.
think fall is in the air. All right, made it here to Huron, South Dakota. And are you ready to see the world's largest? Huh? Pheasant? <laughs> That's right, it's the world's largest pheasant. Take a look again. The world's largest pheasant is 20 feet tall, 40 feet long. Here, let's go over here. Get a better look. That's right. 20 feet tall, 40 feet long, and there's a story behind it, of course. So the story goes like this. There was this uh, giant pheasant that all the hunters in the area were trying to get as their own little trophy. And then uh, one day this, uh, this little boy happened across the giant pheasant. And of course he didn't shoot it or anything like that. And so the pheasant promised that in, in return for the boy's kindness, he would stay in one spot until everybody in the world saw him, the giant pheasant. So that's the story behind the giant pheasant. And it's right here at the edge of the parking lot to the Dakota Inn and the Plains Cafe. And also, you probably saw in the mural here that uh, prairie life is depicted here, them releasing the pheasants and the uh, river right here. I don't know what river this is. I'll check it out. And then the hunters over here doing their thing. So here on South Dakota, going westbound into the weather on the way to Pierre, or as I think they say it, Pierre, South Dakota, uh, the capital. So let's continue on. Oh wait, you know what? I think I'll get something to eat. <laughs> of the uh, state capitol here when we drove in. Let's go see if we can get a quick look on the inside. I, th I think it's still open. Oh, and by the way, here's the governor's office. Should we go in and say hi? Let's see what happens. 